unsearchable, his knowledge unsearchable, his power is unmatchable, his love is unfathomable. I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor, Lord, I adore you. I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor, Lord, I adore you. Yes, you I worship, you I praise, you I honor, name above all names. Good evening, everyone. We'd like, we'd like to welcome you to another prayer meeting where worship is a joy and the love is what? Real. And the love is always real. At this time, bow your heads and close your eyes for the opening prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit in this place. I want to thank you for another week. We ask that you be with us and bless the speaker. For Jesus' sake, I ask, amen. This time, we'd like to wish a happy birthday to London Rose Williams and Samori S. Stevens. Amen. On behalf of the Seventh-day Adventist Church around the world, we'd like to say happy, happy birthday, yes, birthday greetings. Amen. At this time, we have a song service by Sister Blair. Pastor Blair. Good evening. This is half of the Blair ministry this evening. <laughs> um, we are going to start out uh, with hymn number 633. Is that the first hymn? 633, When We All Get to Heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be.
sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway. Clouds will overspread the sky, but when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we We'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Amen. Okay, our second song is I'd Rather Have Jesus, hymn number 327. Okay. I hope this is your testimony this evening that you'd rather have Jesus more than silver or more than gold, more than riches untold, more than houses, we know Bermudians love our houses, more than houses or land, um, and that we'd rather be led by Jesus and that we hunger after him. than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than 
Thank you very much, Dr. Blair, for such beautiful songs. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. The second stanza says, I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. such a beautiful song, beautiful words. This evening, as we consider our testimonies, as we consider what we've gone through throughout the week, this text has brought me encouragement. The psalmist in Psalm chapter 16 and verse 8 wrote, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. So, despite the challenges that I'm faced on a daily basis. When I claim this promise of the Lord being by my right hand, my challenges will not move me. My situations will not cause me to lose faith, simply because my Lord, who has already won the victory, is at my right hand. I invite you at this time to share a few testimonies with us a few words of encouragement of how the lord has been by your side and surely you are here today he has been by your right hand he has kept you will you share with us a few words we see your hands at the back there my brother Getting a joy in the evening nurses. The nurses say, Look, 
play for us. You know, I play it all in these four eighters. And I play it for, um, I think, Pastor Steve's uncle, Gene Steve, Cal D. Shields, so many people don't under man, that, I mean, you'd be surprised. You go to see one person, then you don't know that this person's down there, and I feel my, my life has been drawing closer to Christ, man. Christ has been using me in a mighty way, man, and, and I want you to be encouraged, man. Use your talents and your gifts and get out there and, and, and witness. Forget about all your stress and worries and whatever problems you're going through. Just be more active, because God said the harvest is plenteous, but the labor is a few. Indeed. You know, we've got to get out there and work. Like Christ said, if you go to the hospital, it's like you, you do unto the least of the brethren, you do unto him. Even like the prisons, whatever, even get like a prison ministry, good, you know what I mean? Where people go out there and, and once you start focusing on other people, man, you say, man, you ain't even got no more problems. You know what I mean? Brother laying up behind me blind, you know what I mean? And he said, thank you, Cal, thank you, prison warden from years ago, you know. So I said, thank you, Calvin, thank you. You know, different people are just so happy, happy that I'm down there playing that flute and Praise in God's name, man. So just be encouraged. Amen. To God be the glory. Yeah, Amen. Do we have another testimony? Sister Simon. Thank you. I thank God for answering prayer. Um, boy, it has to be over 40 years ago, more than 40, when I became a Seventh day Adventist Christian. I remember because of the wonderful news that I was learning, that I wanted to share that with everybody, and that's been that way ever since. But especially, you know, you have deep in your heart about family members, workmates. And so I remember sharing that, um, a testimony, and sharing some other information with um, us. I, I better not go too close and just say family and workmate. And over, the, over those 40 years, it was like, um, I'm searching and I'm looking and I'm thinking, is this going to come before the Lord comes? And he always reminded me of Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And I can honestly say these past couple of months, those two specific prayers over 40 years ago, the Lord is answering because already we're sitting down and doing studies with these individuals. And it just brings joy to my heart that had I given up, I would have missed out on this opportunity to testify of the goodness of God. Amen. So Amen. I thank him for that. And I thank him for life, period. Amen. Indeed. Amen. Persistent another testimony okay elder go for it agreed now my testimony is today i'm praising god because today uh was my last day at the bermuda fire and rescue service and i've reached this time of retirement from the service but god's plans always work beyond our own this morning I agreed to go really early this morning and every year when we have fire safety awareness week we go down to flats and we have Sparky there and we're all there waving to everyone taking pictures with kids and stuff like that and I said well on my last day that's what I'm gonna do and so I went down early this morning and uh, it was good to be waving at everybody and, and 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 thinking about my last time I'll be doing that but my daughter had a doctor's appointment early this morning, and she was driving to the doctor's appointment, and she got word that um, it was canceled. And so she drove, she drove, she was driving across where I was this morning, and when she saw me, she pulled in, and she, her and my granddaughter came across the street. Now, wouldn't you know, as even though her appointment was canceled, God knew that at the moment she'll be driving across me. And they came, and I got to wave and spend my last time doing that with my granddaughter in my arms and my daughter next to me. And then my wife, I didn't know this, but my wife was supposed to meet her at her doctor's appointment. 
And so she called, my wife said, you know, it's canceled. So my wife said, well, I'm almost there. So she came all the way to flats anyway. So now I have my last moments there, got pictures taken and all that with my wife and family. my daughter and my grandchild on my last day. So I said, Lord, you know what? They thought that the plans weren't working out, but in actual fact, the plans were working out even better because it was so meaningful and so wonderful to experience that on my last retirement day. Amen, amen, amen. Do we have another, a final one? I could take another one. No. I, I leave you with this. And Ella was just playing the song in the background. One of my very favorite hymns is hymn 99. God will take care of you. The first verse says, Be not dismayed, whate'er betide. God will take care of you. Beneath the, his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. As we go throughout the rest of this week, let this song be bring cheer to your heart, along with Psalms 16 and verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. May God bless us as we continue to worship him in spirit and in truth. As we usher in the next um, part of our program where we are going to pray, let's sing together hymn number 485, I Must Tell Jesus. Sing the first two verses. i uh -huh. 
Amen. As we pray together, I'm going to ask that three people, I see three people I'd like to pray this evening for us. I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to ask our future elder, <laughs> Elder Michael Spencer, to offer prayer for us. Brother Dillis, I'm going to ask you to offer a, pray, a prayer for us. And um, one more. Brother Gerald, I'm going to ask you to offer a prayer for us. Amen. But while we prepare for this prayer time, I want to read to you Psalms 115. Psalm 115. And it reads like this. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory. For thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes they have, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. And I want to say to us, there are many people out there who believe all kinds of things, who trust in all kinds of things and all kinds of people. But none of them is like unto our God. Not for us, God, but for you, for your glory. And so as we prepare our hearts to pray, my, my request and my prayer to us is that we remember that statement, not unto us, God, but unto you, for your glory, for your mercy, for your kindness toward us. And with that, I say, Brother Mike, take us to the throne. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And the sister of Sandra. Uh -huh. Sandra Monis. Okay. Amen. So the family of Sister Sandra Monis from St. George's Church, who has, she has passed. So remember her in prayer. I don't know if anyone else wants to, to, to make that request known out loud as we prepare to pray, Sister Simons. missionaries and the name of the individual you said at first yeah the name you said at first Nikhil Iris so remember Nikhil Iris in your prayers as well amen amen yes mm, amen Amen. So those who were at the rubber tree, those people who were impacted by the ministry there on um, last on Sabbath, so could we keep them in prayer? That's 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 a that's a wonderful thing. I like that. I like that little street ministry thing. Brother Cal, go ahead. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Well, our country's facing a whole lot of things. Amen. Amen. All right. Brother Mike, go ahead and pray for us, my brother. Amen. 
Our Father in heaven, Lord, blessed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done, God. We ask that you forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we want to thank you for the testimonies that we heard this evening, Lord. Thank you for the encouragement of one another. Help us to continue to encourage each, encourage each other as we live this life on earth, getting ready for your kingdom to come, Lord. Lord, we ask that you be with the prayer requests um, that was said, Lord. We ask that you be with Sister Mana's family as they are mourning the loss of a loved one, Lord. We ask that you be with Sister Iris in her um, recovery, Father God. We ask that you continue to uh, cover and, and watch over our missionaries, Lord, mm -hmm. as they um, go through struggling times for you, Lord. Um, of course, they count it a blessing to struggle for you, Lord, but we ask that you would let them see your hand in all that they do, Father God. Uh, we do thank you for the street ministry that we mm -hmm. did have um, in last uh, Sabbath meeting, Lord. Um, and we pray for those souls that were touched, Lord, that they were not just touched in a moment, but they would make a life change so that they can see you and you come in your kingdom, Lord God. We want to thank you uh, for the Wednesday night prayer meeting, the opportunity that we can stop and put aside through the middle of the week, Lord, and, and reflect on you, Lord, and reflect on our week and how it is and ask for courage and um, instruction for the rest of the week, God. Mm -hmm. We just want to thank you for the opportunity to pray to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Most righteous Heavenly Father, Lord, I come thanking you for waking us this morning, Lord, to see this new day, for what you knew for us through the dark hours while we slept. Father, we come now, Lord, asking that you would be with us, that you would forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. Father, I ask that you would be with us the family of Sister Monis, Lord, who you, that you have called home, and also my aunt, Helen, that you also called home. Father, and we, we ask that you be with all the sick amongst us, Lord, that are in Agape House, in the hospital, Brother Cam, suffering a stroke, Lord, that you'd be with them, that you'd be with all the, all the problems, Lord. Our island is beset with a, a lot of problems, Lord. Uh, we've been struck with this new electricity bill, Lord, that's going up by about 25%. Father, we, and a lot of us don't know how we're going to manage it. A lot of the people that don't have jobs, um, the pay is menial, Father, and they find it hard. We ask that you be with them. Lord, that you be with all the many islands all around the world, the Lord, that are are struggling with this COVID test, Lord, and, and everything that's associated with it. Father, we ask that you would be with us, keep us, watch over us, and guide us, Lord. Help us that we may get ourselves into the streets, Lord, and talk to people less fortunate than ourselves, helping them, Lord. Father, we ask that you would be with, that you would be with us all. Watch over us and keep us and guide us, Father. And Lord, we thank you for all your many blessings to us, unworthy as we are. We ask that you would be with us, that you would watch over us and keep us and guide us, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, as we continue this prayer, 
We ask of you, Lord, to be with all of the bereaved families. Uh, Diane Fabric lost her daughter. Andrew Warren passed on Sunday. Tony Deal has passed. Lord, Miss Manus has passed. We ask of you, Lord, to comfort and console these people's families for they are hurting for the loss of their loved ones. Also, Lord, we ask of you to be with our government leaders as they make decisions in governing Bermuda. We need you more now, Lord, to touch their hearts. We know that in the last days, things are gonna be out of hand and they are getting done. But Lord, we ask of you to help us to remain faithful until the end because we can see all around us, Lord, that these are the last days. The rich get richer, the poor get poor, and but Lord, your love goes on forever. So we ask of you to help us in our daily walk, help us to remain faithful to you, and Lord, bless us as we continue striving to make it into the kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, thank you again for who you are. And God, may you bless our pastor tonight as he brings forth the word of life that we all will receive what you have purposed through your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. scripture reading is taken from 1st Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 let no man despise thy youth but be thou but be thou an example of the believers in word in conversation in charity in spirit in faith, in purity. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. The song that we We'll meditate on this evening before the speaker is hymn number 462, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Sing with me if you know it. Great. 
Can the church say amen? amen? Come on, set the church say amen. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Father in heaven, bless this word tonight. Speak to our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. Come on, take me to those slides if you would as we get our cave prep. Well, there's a new text on the screen. There is a new text on the screen. And I'm wondering, does somebody know what that text says? I always have these avid people here in church, Sister Canes, who quickly open their Bibles and open their phones. I'm looking for a true cave dweller who knows what the text says, huh? Can the church say, nobody knows what the text says? All right, all right, that time is up. Come on, take me to this new text. Take me to this new text. It's a very amazing text. The Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. And what, church? And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. And next 9 and 10 says, what? Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Now it's amazing here because as we know, Ellen White lets us know clearly that in essence, this is, if you would, the conversation that's going on at the ascension of Jesus Christ. This, if you would, as they approach the heavenly gates. Now, we learned last week that it was Moses that was on the gate. And so somehow the angelic host that were still in heaven have convinced Moses uh, to keep the gate shut. <laughs> that in essence, don't open the gate yet. Make them ask. Make the angels that are carrying him ask to open the gate. And the angels carry him when they get close. Say, lift up your heads, O ye gate, and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. The angels, and, and, and if you would, Moses up there on the gate said, who is this king of glory? Huh? And they come back saying, the Lord, the host, the Lord, strong and mighty, he is the king of glory. Now, I like, this, I like verse 9, because again, they say, lift up your heads, O ye gates, 
And here's the thing. They put a word in there that says even. Oh, Lord, help us. Um, I, I need you to understand. It, it gives extra depth. It gives extra meaning. It makes it more intense. In other words, why didn't you lift them up the first time we said it? Um, in essence, if you would, yes, those gates, those are the ones we're talking about. In case you were wondering, even lift them up. Right now, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Again, if you would, <laughs> the angels on the gate said, who is this king of glory? The angels carried us at the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty. Why does this matter? Because the angelic host, you got to understand, this is kind of like, you know, like kids playing in the yard. They do this for one purpose. They will find any excuse to give God some praise. I wonder when's the last time you actually just made up a game on how to give God some praise, man. You say it and then I say it and then they say it over here and we say it because God is so good that he is actually worth praising even when we can't think of something in that moment to praise him for. The truth of the matter is he's still worthy and if he does nothing else, he's worthy worthy of our praise. Uh, lift up your hands, O you gates. Come on, church, and be ye lifted up. Now, this one you should know by now, Psalm chapter 24, verse 1. The Bible says what? Oh, don't try to act like, yeah, 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 yeah. People writing down all four texts trying to get ahead. The earth, come on, take me to the next text. What does it say, everybody? The earth, what? And the what? And the fullness thereof. The world and they, what? That dwell, it's a wonderful text, isn't it, right? That the earth belongs to God, right? Stop worrying about tomorrow when your father owns the world. Everything is his. Matter of fact, you belong to him. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. Um, there's nothing that's going on around that God cannot control. And God will give you strength even when you don't have any. It's an amazing thing. Uh, yesterday I preached... I preached eight o'clock in the no nine o'clock in the morning for a prayer call for the union. I came here and preached ten thirty, brother Dillis, for the radio program and TV program for Rock Sun. And I was gone. I've been taking that flight. I still got jet lag from that flight. I was weary. I had no strength at all. Since the jokes, I had nothing. I'm literally taking inch and steps coming up the hill, and I'm trying to just get in the back door so I can sit in my seat and take a little thirty minute nap or something because I'm wounded. And when I'm passing by the door yesterday, guess what? Guess who I ran into? I see a couple of culprits sitting right over there right now. I, I, listen, listen. I ran into the seniors club. And I'm just trying to pass the door. And I'm, Pastor, come on in. Da -da -da. And you go in there, Pastor, just give us a word. Give us a word. And with no strength, I need you to understand. The Lord, listen. It's in the moments when you don't have strength uh, that he blesses you the most uh, to remind you that he never needed you in the first place, that he could do it all by himself. Uh, so in those moments, uh, you're going to always do your best work simply because the fact of the matter is you have no ability whatsoever to give yourself the credit. Yeah. So when you're weak, he is what, church? He is strong. Come on now. You... Come on, if people don't know, if you don't know this next one, then you're going to have to leave church immediately, okay? Immediately. Come on, Psalm chapter 23, what does the Bible say? The Lord is my what? I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down, what? In green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Come on, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear no evil. For thou art thy rod and thy, they what? Thou preparest what? A table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My what? Runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. What? All the days of my life. And I will do what? Dwell in the house, what, of the Lord. Come on, somebody ought to say amen. Come on, next slide if you would. And then I'm going to have to come back because some of you may have missed it. Psalm chapter 22, verse 1 says what? My God. Come on, take us there. My God. 
Why what, church? Hast thou forsaken me? Uh, if I can pause parenthetically, I'm going to get to the sermon, but if I can pause parenthetically here just for a second, whoever's up on the slides, I can't see you, but whoever's on the slides, I need to go through these verses one more time. I need you to take me to Psalm chapter 23 and verse 4. Psalm 23 and verse 4. That was a couple of slides before. What does the Bible say? Yea, though I walk... Through the valley. I wish I had a, ah, uh, come on somebody. The text says, yea, though I walk, oh, uh, somebody missed it again. Yea, though I walk through the valley. I need you to understand that in order to have a valley, you need to understand uh, that topography, uh, that geography uh, demands that if there's a valley, there must be some mountains close by. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Uh, you can't have a valley without having some mountains. Now, it's interesting because right here in Psalm 23, we have a valley. Yeah. Woo! Take me to Psalm chapter 22, verse 1, because there's got to be some mountains close by. And in Psalm chapter 22 and verse 1, the Bible says, my God, come on, get it up on the screen. My God, Psalm 22, verse 1, why hast thou forsaken me? Ah, oh, last I checked, Elder, that's Mount Calvary. Uh, oh, when I look forward uh, to Psalm 24, oh, come on. The text says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, uh, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory uh, shall come in. Who is uh, this King of glory? Last I checked, Sister Keynes, uh, that's Mount Zion. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place that as you walk through the valley, uh, you have nothing to fear. Because on the left is Mount, if you would, Calvary, the place where Jesus paid it all. And on the right is the promised land. It's Mount Zion where all of us will go if we are faithful. I don't know where you need your hope to come from tonight. Maybe you need to look at the cross and see Jesus bleeding and dying for your sins. Or maybe you're so sick and tired of bills. Oh, I wish I had a witness down here. Some of you are tired of mortgages and some of you are tired of high food costs. Some of you have gone and tried to learn how to be gardeners. Oh, Lord, help us. So you don't have to pay the high food costs. Come on, church. Some of you are nervous. Nervous. Very nervous about your next Belco bill. But I need you to know that the Lord has a place for you where the bills are paid in full. He has a new place, a new heaven, and a new earth where we won't have. Do you realize, man, up in heaven, electricity is free? Lord Jesus, man, it's free. Matter of fact, matter of fact, up in heaven, up in heaven, Sherman. Solar panels are not allowed in heaven. Oh, Lord, help us. Because, guess what? The brightness of the sun, oh, Lord, help us, cannot compare to the brightness of the sun. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. Uh, that, that, that in essence, uh, the S-U-N uh, ain't nothing but a moon uh, to the S-O-N. Uh, that in essence, his glory uh, lights all of heaven all by itself. Oh, we don't need for electricity. He is electricity. Uh, he is the power. He is that dunamis power that will keep us going uh, throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. There can be no valleys without any mountains. There can be no mountains without any valleys. In this life, you're either <laughs> in the valley. Oh, Lord, help us. Climb in the mountain. <laughs> Come on, some of y'all remember. I, I was a little kid in this church, uh, Elder Smith. You and I were probably, you know, young, young people. When this church, it always amazed me, this church used to love to sing a song. Come on now. By some really old people. You know them. Come on now. Old Sunday church people too. You know what I'm saying? F.C. Barnes and Janice Brown. Huh? They used to sing, I'm climbing up. Oh, Lord, help us on the rough side. <laughs> Come on, I'm doing my best to make it in. <laughs> oh, I need you to understand uh, that you've got to get some sort of life and energy inside of you that's determined uh, that come what may. When the Lord comes, you'll be climbing up that mountain. Uh, you'll be making your way into Zion because 
of the blood and the covering of Jesus Christ. Come on now. I need to get into this text. But before, hold that text up on the screen. I want to read the text, the verses that come before it. If you guys could go back to me as we get into our text tonight. Chapter 15. Just leave that on the screen. Chapter 15. I want to start with 36. Because I need you guys to understand. Things were not always peaches and apples and golden cream, even with the disciples. Here's what the text says. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Makes a good thing, right? Hey, man, come on, come on. This Paul says, look, man, Barnabas, let's go check out all them churches we preach to, all them people we baptize. Let's go back and visit them again, see how they're doing. That strengthened them. That was actually their practice. Ellen says it was their practice to go back and strengthen those people to make sure that they were strong and still strong in the Lord. It's a challenge we always have, Sister Simon, trying to strengthen people after their baptism. See, it's one thing when you get them all studied up in the study and all they see is you, Sister Keynes. They get excited about joining the church and then they join. Lord help us. And when they join, they have to run into the rest of you. Oh, Lord, help us. I wish I had a witness in this place, huh? And, and that can be very, you know, troubling uh, when you run into the rest, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because the rest are not always, uh, if you would, uh, as saved as they should be. And, and so oftentimes challenges come and they recognize this. So they went to visit them. Now, here's what it says. And Barnabas determined, this is the Barnabas, and Barnabas determined to take with them John, who was, whose surname was Mark. In other words, Paul says, hey, Barabbas, you know, let, let me, sorry, Barnabas, let's go ahead and check out these cities we preached to before. And so B B Barnabas says, hey, you know what? Let's take John Mark. Let's take, and in actuality, John Mark is his cousin, right? Let's take my cousin, John Mark. Uh, hold on a second. But Paul, this is the Paul, but Paul, verse 38, thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them, from Pamphylia and went out with them to the work and went not with them to the work and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder what the text says they departed asunder one from another and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed into Cyprus Paul and Barnabas broke up because Barnabas wanted to bring John Mark, his cousin, and Paul saying, when we went on the last mission and the pressure got a little heated, he abandoned us. He can't be trusted. I don't want him coming. Leave Mark where he is. And, and, and you know, Barnabas, always the compassionate one, always encouraging people, no, 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 that's my cousin. Come on, give him another chance. And they got so contentious. Lord, help us, man. Now, some of us talk about, uh, Lord, help us. These are, <laughs> this is Paul, who we call the greatest Christian, having an argument with Barnabas, the nicest guy around. Now, you, gotta, you can't forget, right? This is very contentious. Paul ain't been saved that long since the jokes. Lord, help us, man. You know, his, his previous work, Lord, help us, son, was killing Christians. Woo! Hold on a second now. Barnabas ain't trying to argue this too long. Uh, I wish I had a witness in this place. But in essence, uh, I need to go ahead and cut this short. Let me take my cousin. I better get him out of here. I don't know what Paul would do to him. I don't know what Paul would do to him if I leave him around. We're going to go our separate way, and it's in this moment that Paul then takes on Silas. That's where we get those phrases in Scripture. Paul and Silas, right? It's in this moment that he takes on Silas. Paul chose Silas, departed, being recommended by the brethren to the grace of God, and he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirmed the churches. All these guys were recommended. All of them did the Lord's work, but they didn't all get along. Lord help us. Huh? Huh? Sometimes they had to go their separate ways to do the Lord's work. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. <laughs> Sometimes they had to go their separate way. <laughs> listen, man, listen. In church, you may not like everyone. Your responsibility is to love everyone. Oh, Lord, help us. You are to love everybody in church. There are some people in church that you don't like. 
Agape love loves people that you don't like. Uh, agape love sees the member that got on your last nerve at church on the side of the road with a flat tire. Listen, listen, listen. Phileo love will let you drive on by. Huh? Come on. Eros might let you drive on by. But agape says, that's my brother in Christ who is in need. Let me go and heap some coals of fire on him. Maybe he'll change. I don't know, but I got to love him. Why? Why does that agape love matter so much? It matters so much because you can never forget that at our basic, even at our best, we are at, in, it's what we'll say, we are, are at variance with the Father. We are at variance with heaven. And that God has to show us love even when he doesn't like us. Yeah. God does love you. But there's a whole bunch of things you do that he doesn't like. Okay, here's what the text says. Take me to first chapter 16, verse 1. We're going to run through this. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was Jewish and believed, but his father was a Greek. Let me tell you, the contentions, some of the biases that we often talk about was right there in the early church. The reason why they're labeling this, because there's a reason. It, it, it was a problem back then. The boy Timothy, they're about to take him on and try to get him into ministry. The problem is his mama's a Jew, but his dad is a Greek. So they're concerned, they're concerned about his religion, about what he stands for. Come on, next, next verse. Take me to the next verse, if you would. Which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and I could have. In other words, Paul is trying to get Timothy into the ministry and all the church wants to talk about, don't forget his daddy is a Greek. <laughs> not, not taking the boy for his own measure. His daddy is a Greek. We got to keep our eye on him. Now, understand, this is what Paul does. Verse 3, verse 3, come on now. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and so here's the thing, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. They circumcised, Paul has him circumcised so the people would not hold against him that he's uncircumcised and not allow him to do ministry. Come on, let's keep going. Alan has some words to say about that. Take me if you would. Next slide. Come on, we got to get Timothy ready. I want to posit to you tonight that there are Timothys amongst us today that we need to get ready for ministry because this work in finishing up the gospel is going to require that we get assistance from those, many of which are already in the pews and some are yet to show up. The truth of the matter is, though, in order for us to get them ready, we got to train them and we got to teach them in love. Here's the thing. Here's what it says. He thought not good to take with them one who during their first missionary journey, this is back talking about my man, uh, 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 John Mark, who had left them in a time of need. Paul was not inclined to excuse Mark's weakness in deserting the work for the safety and comforts of home. When Mark couldn't handle the pressure, he went home, Sister Keynes, went home to his mama. Huh? Uh, this is serious work we're doing out here. Now you got to understand, Paul's a rough rider. Paul went on murder missions, okay? He's used to killing people. You can't, listen, if you're going to commit murder, now I, I'm not, I'm, I'm sure, I, I don't know if any of you, but, but if you're going to commit murder, you're going to do a high crime, you need somebody, now this is the, always the funny thing about, about crime people, sister jokes, it's funny to me, I don't care if you're a murderer, I don't care if you're a thief, like a robber who, who robs a bank, Mike, it's crazy. <laughs> this is the Christian crazy thing. They're about to rob the bank, right? But they always want to make sure the guy robbing it with them is somebody they can trust. <laughs> think, 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 think about it. You're about to steal from the bank. I got to have somebody I can trust. And then, here's the funny part about it, after they rub it, they expect everybody who did the robbery 
to be honest and break the money up fairly. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing, though. So we can't take this guy with us. Next slide. Come on. Tell me some more. He urged that one with so little stamina. This is Paul talking about Mark. One with so little stamina was unfitted for work requiring patience, self-denial, bravery, devotion, faith, and a willingness to sacrifice if need be, even life itself. So sharp was the contention that Paul and Barnabas separated, the latter following out his convictions and taking Mark with him. Next slide. Next slide. In Timothy, Paul saw one who appreciated the sacredness of the work of a minister who was not appalled at the prospect of suffering and persecution and who was willing to be taught. He wanted to learn and he wasn't afraid of persecution. In his mind, unlike John Mark. Okay, next up, next slide, next slide. Uh, uh, because you got to understand, if you're going to serve in God's house, you will be persecuted. You can't hold a position in God's house and not suffer persecution. Lord help us. Uh, there are some of you that have recently taken positions. You know that, that as soon as you take the position, so comes trouble. Yet the apostle did not venture to take the responsibility of giving Timothy, an untried youth, a training in the gospel ministry without first fully satisfying himself in regard to his character and his past life. Okay? That's why we vet people before we put them in, right? Next up, next up. Check, check what it says. Timothy was a mere youth when he was chosen by God to be a teacher. Now, this is before Paul ever gets hold of him. But his principles had been so established by his early education that he was fitted to take his place as Paul's helper. And though young, he bore his responsibilities with Christian meekness. He's very young, but he's already humble, and he already knows the gospel. Come on, next slide. This is, this is the one that pitched. As a precautionary measure, Paul wisely advised Timothy to be circumcised. This is Ellen White. Not that God required it, but in order to remove from the minds of the Jews that which might be an objection to Timothy's ministry. Even us as ministers, elders, leaders of the church, you have to understand there are some things you cannot do that you just cannot do. You just can't do. It ain't got nothing to do with God. It ain't got nothing to do with many. Oftentimes it's just tradition. It's just the way things are, but you can't do it because the last thing you want is that issue, whatever it might be, to get in the way of you sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you have to let it go sometimes, even though there's nothing wrong with it. Oh, Lord, help us. Whoever you're ministering to, if it's a problem, you got to let it go. Because your primary goal is making sure that they hear the gospel and they make heaven their home. So you are not important. Jesus is. It's not about you. It's about him. Lord help us. It's okay. All right, we're almost done here. Yet while he conceded this much to Jewish prejudice, he believed and taught circumcision or uncircumcision to be nothing and the gospel of Christ to be everything. So he made the boy get circumcised because he knew who he was preaching to. You better be circumcised. Especially with your daddy being a Greek. You better get circumcised. Huh? While Paul ran around preaching to everybody, you ain't got to get circumcised. The circumcised ain't nothing. He's out there preaching in the street. Circumcision is nothing. Timothy, go get circumcised. Okay? Because these knuckleheads think you're still supposed to be circumcised. While we're still preaching it, go and get circumcised. Yeah. Because it's not about you. It's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Huh? It's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Something, if, if a church member, church members don't like the shoes you're wearing, then change your shoes. Because I don't want to come up here and all they're doing is looking at my shoes when they should be hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You got to let go of self that others might be saved. Yeah? Come on now. This is the last text. I want us to read this together. Let no man despise thy youth. 
Here's the thing. I don't, need, I don't want you guys to miss this, right? I don't care how young a person is. Let's never forget that Jesus, the greatest ever, started ministry at 30, right? It's important for us to realize that a person's age does not matter, okay? If somebody in this church is seven years old, eight years old, whatever you are, and you're full of the Holy Spirit, then you should be allowed to work in the house of God. But here's what the text says. Sometimes we ignore the rest. Let no man despise what? Thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers. No, it doesn't say to the believers. Be thou an example of the believers. In other words, if we got an eight-year-old, six-year-old preacher, whatever it is, who knows the beliefs of this church, who are living the beliefs of this church, and understand how to share the word of God, we have no place to hold them back. No place to hold them back. And I'm a firm believer in that, Sister Simon, because I was baptized when I was six. <laughs> okay? And why was I baptized when I was six? Because my mother, just like you, was a Bible worker. And every single crusade, crusade after crusade, my mother, I don't know, old school, we had to sit on the front row. Lord help us. <laughs> That's where you sat every night, night after night, for Oscar Lane. Ten weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, night after night for Raymond Saunders. Night after night after night after night. Then after that, you got Elder Ward coming. You got Henry Wright coming. You got all these greats that are coming and coming and coming. After a while, there ain't nothing you don't know. You sitting on the front row, you don't heard it all, man. What you going to tell me now? And, and when my mama realized that, all right, you go ahead now. You know all that. Take yourself and go get in the water. And my sister and I went into the watery grave of baptism on the same day, led by him. I, every time I got issues and people come fussing to me at church, I blame Bob Wolf, okay? Because Bob Wolf was the deacon that led me into the watery grave of baptism. I blame him, Manny. I blame him, okay? Because the truth of the matter is, is that in essence, uh, that time, as a young kid, watching all these great preachers walk up and down, prepared me now and Timothy was prepared by a mother and a grandmother who were determined to teach him the word of God <laughs> yeah great Timothy huh had a mama who knew the Bible had a grandmother who knew the Bible had a dad all he knew was paganism <laughs> Greek <laughs> that's all he knew but somehow in the midst of all of that now, now, if I can pause parenthetically, I could spend some time, Sister Simons, on the fact that Timothy's mother married outside the church. Oh, Lord, help us. Her mama was a Jew. When it's time for her to get married, she marries outside of the church. But what is Scripture reminding us of? That it doesn't matter where a person comes from. It matters who they're connected to. It matters what you are when you decide to take the scene. We cannot judge you by your parents. We judge you based upon where you are today. It's an amazing thing because the truth is, is that many of us come from varied backgrounds. Our parents were not always in the church. Our grandparents were not always in the church. But we're here today because somebody took time to teach us the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Next slide. I think that's it. I think that's it right there. Yeah. Our challenge today, some of you have little ones. I know, as I look out there, there are little ones out there. Little Samay is out there. Little kids are out there. I see grandparents here. I see parents here. Your job is to get Timothy ready. <laughs> In the home is where Timothy got his foundation. After he got the foundation, the church couldn't help but see it and put him to work. I'll never forget, you know, there's a lady who sits on the second row at prayer meeting who's now a gardener. I just found out she's now a gardener. And here's the thing, here's the thing. I'll never forget being challenged. I thought it was the craziest thing ever. Being challenged, uh, we want the youth to take over Sabbath school on Sabbath morning. 
Sure. Well, what do you want to, what do you want to, this is what I want you to do, Dave. I want you to do the open. She could have given me the closing prayer, Sister Keynes. She gave me the opening prayer. The first thing that happens at Sabbath school at 9.15 was my responsibility. Now, I had a moment. She was Adventist. Of course, my dad's Adventist. They love the church. They love Sabbath school. They love church. But their tendency, Mike, was to get here around 10.40, 10.45, kind of like after preliminaries. I'm living White's Island. In order for me to get up, one, I got to get up earlier. Two, I got to convince my daddy to get me across on the boat and drop me off because he ain't ready yet. And I got to convince this. Then I got to run from flagpole up here. I got up here about 9.14, Mike. About 9.14, I got up here, walked in here, tired as what? Like, why am I up this early? Walked up there, said my prayer, and sat down. But in that moment, I learned what it meant to serve in the house of God. Later on, that same gardener would ask me to preach my very first sermon. Yeah, yeah, uh, Dave, we need you to preach. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, we need you to preach. And I need you to understand, though, that the challenge came to me when I came to do that thing. I, I, I'm probably 12, 13 years old. When I came to preach, I was 15. Parents raise you, they teach you, they give you foundation. The church cannot ignore that. The church must put the youth of this congregation to work. <laughs> must put them to work. And as we get ready for elections, we get ready for next year, we must put the youth of this church to work. <laughs> we, we, we always say it, they're going to finish the work. <laughs> they're going to finish the work. Well, if they're going to finish the work, they're going to finish the work because we took time to get Timothy ready. Let's do our part together and make sure that we have an army of youth that are ready to finish up this work and welcome our soon and coming Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word tonight. As we announce and we give this closing prayer right now, Father, fill us with your spirit. Take us safely from this place, but never from your presence. May we work hard with our young people to get them ready to take over, to lead, and lead not from a place of incompetence, but lead from a place of knowing their Redeemer, knowing what they believe, knowing what they stand for, because in them is the energy and the strength to finish the work. Father, bless them in that regard. Show us who they are, and may we work together as a family to get them ready to lead us home. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys tonight. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening.